guys. Welcome to another week of Topics and Tips with the Nursing Studio. For those of you who do not know me, I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock, founder and CEO of the Nursing Studio. And this week we're talking anemia. For those of you who have done my reviews or who follow me, you know I always do my Brittany's Brilliance. And I have the 2-1-2 rule for anemias because there are five common anemias that you may see in practice and it'll also help you prepare for boards. So I want to give you some quick tips so that you can easily identify one, those that fall into each category and be successful on boards and for your patients in practice, okay? Come on, follow me. So let's discuss those five common anemias that I just, I just talked about. So there are IDA, which is your uh, iron deficiency anemia. We have our thalassemia. We have our anemia of chronic disease. We have our folate deficiency anemia, and we also have that B12 deficiency anemia. So how do you classify those? Let's talk about it. First, you have to understand cytic versus chromic. And this is by lab value. Cytic looks at the size of the red blood cells, whereas chromic looks at the color of the red blood cells. Cytic is identified by your MCV, and that normal lab value is 80 to 100. Whereas with chromic, it is 31 to 37, and that lab value is MCHC. And I always say, MCHC looks like that CHC, it's like an abbreviation of chromic, right? So when you think about that, you'll know cytic is the other one, okay? So when you you go through all of these, you got to make sure you're able to identify those. So again, cytic is your lab value MCV, and the normal range is from 80 to 100. So again, so if it's less than 80, that means it's microcytic, because micro means small, right? So it's less than 80, so it's microcytic. If it's anywhere from 80 to 100, that's the normal range, right? So it's normal acidic. And then if it's greater than 100, it's called macrocytic because macro is large, right? And then we have our chromic. So we look at that as hypochromic. So hypo, remember the normal range for your MCHC is anywhere from 31 to 37. So less than 31 is hypochromic. 31 to 37 is a normal range, so it's normal chromic. And if it's greater than 37, it's considered hyperchromic because hyper means more, right? So that's how we're going to identify our lab values. Now let's talk about how they are classified in that 212 rule and placing all five of these in each one of those categories. So let me give you the backstory on the 212 rule. Those that don't know the story, I used to play basketball. And those who know basketball, a uh, common floor um, setup for defense, and they do an office too, but defense is the 2-1-2 two, two stance. Because what happens is there's five players on the floor, so we have two people up top, one in the center, and two down low, right? So that's what it made me think about 2-1-2. Two, two. Because if you think about anemias, there's two that falls in the lower scale, there's one that falls in the middle, and then two more that falls in the higher scale. So what does that mean? Let's take a look right here. So with the 212 rule, the two that falls in the lower scale, it falls in that microcytic hypochromic range, meaning it's less than 80 and less than 31, right? We just talked about cytic versus chromic, your MCV and your MCHC. And guess what those two are? It's your iron deficiency anemia, also known as IDA, and your thalassemia. Then we have our normal cytic, normal chromic, and there's only one that falls in that range. And that's anemia of chronic disease. Because guess why? It's chronic, so their things begin to normalize. And I'll further um, explain a little bit on that. Then we have two that falls in the larger scale, which is our macrocytic normal chromate. So that means that your MCV is greater than 100, but your MCHC falls in that normal range from 31 to 37. The two that falls in that range are your folate deficiency anemia and your B12 deficiency anemia. So now that you kind of know the things that fall in that 2-1-2 category, you have to understand how to differentiate the ones that have two in the same scenario, right? So let me break it down for you. So first we have that microcytic hypochromic range from our first two. So again, it's the 2-1-2 two, two rule. There's two in the small range, one in the normal range and two in the larger range. So there's two in the smaller range, which is your microcytic hypochromic, 
is your IDA, your iron deficiency anemia, and your thalassemia. So let's talk about how to differentiate between those two. So we already said, okay, we know they're anemic, so their hemoglobin and their hematocrit are low, right? And then we looked at their MCV and their MCHC, and they fall into that microcytic hypochromic category. Well, how do you know which is which? Well, with iron deficiency anemia, the ferritin and the iron levels will be low. Why? Because they're deficient in iron. So their iron stores are going to be low, and their iron is going to be low. No brainer, right? But with phallus... Thalassemia, but with thalassemia, it's normal. It's normal for this one. So if those iron and ferritin levels are normal, you know, key indicator, it cannot be iron deficiency anemia because they would be deficient in iron. But with thalassemia, it's normal, okay? So take that note, tell everybody Brittany told you, and thank me later. Now you guys, anemia of chronic disease is not as bad because it's the only one that falls into this category. So you know we have the two, one, two rule. This is the one that falls in that one category. And this is the one where the MCV and the MCHC lab values are normal. So they are anemic, their hemoglobin and hematocrit are low. So it gives us the indicator, hey, they're anemic. Something is setting off that alarm to let us know to look further. But the MCHC and the MCV fall into the normal range. The only one that falls into this range is the anemia of chronic disease. Because it is chronic, things normalize, but their hemoglobin and hematocrit remain less than. So it's low. So you know there's anemia here. So it's usually like an underlying something causing this, like GI bleeds or et cetera. So you want to treat the source and that will cure all of this. But I just want to first make sure you're able to identify it, okay? Lastly, you guys, in my 212 rule, you know, there's two in the small area, or the lower level, I should say, one in the normal level, and then the other two are in the larger level, which is that macrocytic normal chromic range. Macrocytic being that the MCV is greater than 100, but normal chromic because it falls between 31 to 37. The two I told you already that falls into this range are your folate deficiency anemia and your B12 deficiency anemia. So again, just like we did IDA and thalassemia, how do you differentiate? Because when you get to this point and you know they're anemic because their hemoglobin and hematocrit are low, then you turn around and you look at the MCHC and the MCV and you see it's macrocytic normal chromic, your indicator goes, my differential diagnosis is um, folate deficiency anemia, excuse me, and um, B12 deficiency. But how do you differentiate? That's the key. So guess what? B12 deficiency anemia, they're going to present with those neurologic deficits and changes. They're going to have those paresthesias. They'll have changes in gait. They, they may have that classic beefy red tongue. And be sure, I always tell y'all, pay attention to those classic terms and things that they give you so that you're able to identify it for board purposes. But also, the same in practice. I had a patient come to me and kept telling me, you know, oh, I'm anemic. And, you know, you know, they kept telling me I'm anemic. They don't know what's causing it. And, you know, he happened to talk to me and his daughter says something about, and his tongue is just this like bright red nasty. I'm like, he has a B12 guaranteed. Put him on something, treated him immediately. 80 something year old man, he was, you know, great, but to the point, and I'm not gonna go too deep. But anyway, B12, they'll have that beefy red tongue. And I, when I tell you it's red to the point that you're gonna be like, oh, wait. And then they'll have the changes neurologically, whereas folate deficiency anemia will not have any of those symptoms. You'll just see those lab value changes, okay? But be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And as my kids always say, click that little bell for, <laughs> for notification. I should have let them come on and tell y'all that part right there. But be sure y'all click that little bell. When you click the bell, it makes sure it's to notify you guys of every time that I post a video so you don't miss out on all the good stuff that I got for you. Okay, so again, I'll see y'all next week. Bye.